Hey everyone, uh, Joel here, time to make another video. Um, if you remember last time we uh, implemented add in our AutoGuard library, so uh, adding two tensors, now we're going to do uh, multiplication, uh, multiplying two tensors. So um, that was part two, so we'll do part three. Um, hit branch part zero three. Get check out part zero three. Um, okay, good, so we have a new branch for this. Um, and I should, uh, should probably be more self-promoting and say that uh, if you want to follow my Twitter, it's at uh, Joel Cruz. Um, good. So um, last time we did this add function. Uh, and so we're just going to do something very similar uh, with multiplication. And multiplication uh, does broadcasting in basically the exact same way addition does. So uh, the work we did there... Um, should carry over pretty uh, simply. Um, so the main difference is going to be that data is T1 data times T2 data. So I multiply T1 times T2. I just uh, multiply component-wise and expanding and broadcasting if necessary. Uh, I still require grad if either one requires grad. And now um, I want to I'll just copy this logic too and, and modify it, which is always uh, super error prone. But uh, that's fine. So um, th th there's one twist here. Um, and that twist is going to be uh, the following. So let's say that I have uh, you know y equals uh, a times b. And I have some. Uh, Uh, dl uh, dy. So I, I have some loss function uh, with, and I, I take its derivative with respect to y, and I want to find uh, dl dA. Uh, and so I have dl dA equals dl dy times uh, dy dA, which uh, which is just p. Okay, so that's uh, that's calculus. That's a terrible explanation. So let me uh, try and explain it better. Um, you know, let's say I have uh, some gradient with respect to y is five. So when I increase y by a little bit, um, I have some loss function that increases by five times that little bit. Say, um, and I say if I increase a by a little bit. <clears throat> how much uh, do I increase the loss by? Well, if I increase A by a little bit, I'm multiplying by B, so um, let's say I do A plus some small epsilon times B, um, which is A times B plus uh, epsilon times B. Um, so if I increase a by some tiny amount epsilon, I increase y um, by epsilon times b, which means I increase my loss by epsilon times b uh, times dl dy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing a terrible job explaining this. But anyway, the point is, is that uh, if I increase t1 by a little bit, the, you know, small amount, the amount by which the output increases depends on t2. Um, and so I just need to do that multiplication. So um, here what I do is I say, you know, grad, this is the gradient with respect to the output. And I'm going to turn that into gradient with respect to T1. So that's just going to be grad times T2. Um, and then I sum out the added dims the same way, sum across the broadcasted dims the same way. And similarly here, I just say grad equals grad times, uh, and not t2, but t, t2 dot data, um, grad equals grad times t1 dot data. So that's all I have to do to change this. And at this point, there's a lot of repeated code. So if I were supremely motivated, I would factor some of this out. Um, but I'm not that motivated yet. Um, and so similarly, let's add test. Uh, tensor mole dot pi and 
Uh, I'm just going to copy these tests and paste them and modify them, which is easier than typing everything from scratch. So I want to import tensor and mol, um, test tensor mol, and test simple mol. Okay, so now, you know, I have this negative one, negative two, negative three backwards, and I um, want to turn it into a gradient for T1. Well, uh, well I guess it should probably change this to mol as well. Um, so I multiply and Let's figure this out. If I increase T1, this 1 by a little bit, I increase the product by 4 times that little bit, and then times minus 1, so that would be minus 4. Similarly, I increase this by a little bit. Um, I'll increase it by 5 times minus 2 is minus 10, and then 6 times minus 3 is minus 18. And um, similarly, I get minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. Uh, minus 2 times 2 is... Uh, minus 4 and minus 3 times 3 is minus 9. So I think that's right. Um, I'll delete this comment because we already have it elsewhere. Um, and we can do this same thing. Um, and now let's do um, I'll multiply them. And now what happens is when I do the T2 grad, um, each of these gets multiplied by that. So hopefully this will be 7, 8, 9, and uh, 7, 8, 9. And when I increase T2 by a little bit, um, it adds 1 here and then also 4 here. So I should have to add those together. So that should be 5 and uh, 7 and 9. So hopefully that's right. Um, and then here is this second case where I want to multiply them and again do the tensor backwards. Um, and now let's figure this out. Uh, they're the same size. So um, T1 gradient should still be 789 and 789. And then this one should again be 579, I think, but in two-dimensional array. So let's uh, run PyTest and see if that works. And that works. Good. So that was pretty easy because we already did all the work for addition. Um, now I also want to do a subtraction. But, you know, one thing I could do is I could just go through and do all this again. Um, but there's one thing that's maybe a little bit simpler, and I'm going to need to do it anyway. Um, which is I want to take the negative of a tensor. Um, and so what is the negative of a tensor? I just negative all the elements, and I negative the gradient. So data equals you know, minus t dot data uh, requires grad equals t dot requires grad. Um, if re requires grad, um, dependent depends on equals a uh, dependency uh, relies on t and what is the function it should just be lambda x minus x i'm not even going to name it so whatever grad i have on the output um, when i put a negative there it just negatives the grad um, else uh, depends on equals no list and so then we can just return the tensor data requires grad and depends on. And then finally, um, if I want to subtract T1, which is a tensor, T2 is a tensor, and get a tensor, you know, instead of writing out subtract, I'm just going to um, return add T1 neg T2. So, um, Computationally, that's going to be slightly inefficient because I'm adding two nodes in the graph, one to neg neg negatize T2 and one to um, add them, but uh, it's simpler than writing it all out again. So let's, um, let's make some tests for that. Um, test tensor sub.py, and again, I can... Uh, 
you know, in an ideal world, I would probably write test for negative as well, but uh, this is not an ideal world. Um, so let's call this test simple sub uh, t3 equals sub t1 t2. So now um, what happens? Uh, when this goes backwards, that should be fine, but you know, this should be plus one, plus two, plus three, because it just flips the sign. Um, so you know, broadcast sub, and again, this should be pretty much the same. The only difference is that the gradients for T2 should be uh, reversed. And similarly, and you can see that I'm not giving these a lot of thought because I, I put a lot of the thought in the first time um, around. Uh, and, and they all pass. Um, so that's good. Um, and now we've been doing a lot of like grunt work. So let's see if we have enough to um, start using this library. Um, and I'll just call this minimize a function dot pi. Um, and so, you know, the idea here is that we like to use our library uh, to minimize a function, say uh, x squared. Okay, so, um, Let's say x equals tensor, uh, let's say 10, minus 10, 10, minus 5, 6, 3, 1. Uh, so I just made that up. Requires grad equals true. Okay. And um, let's say sum of squares equals... Uh, so I better import some things. So from autograd tensor, import tensor, tensor sum, uh, let's say mole. Um, so sum of squares is the tensor sum of mole xx. Okay. So I multiply x by x. Um, so I get all the squares and then I sum them up. And this is, uh, is a zero tensor. Um, and we want to, um, we want to uh, minimize uh, the sum of squares. So, you know, let's say for i in range, 100 steps is probably good, right? Um, and let me move this in here now. A sum of squares equals tensor sum. Okay. Um, and now what I can do is I can do sum of squares uh, backward. So that will go back and in particular will compute the gradient of this sum of squares function I'm trying to memorize, the minimize with respect to x. And then what I would like to do, uh, what I would like to do is say x. Uh, minus equal, you know, 0 0.1 times x dot grad. We have not implemented minus equal. But what I can do is say, uh, so, so this is uh, ugly because we haven't implemented the stuff yet. Um, let's say uh, delta x equals uh, 0 0.1 times uh, x dot grad, and then now I'm just going to have to x equals tensor delta x dot theta requires grad equals true. Okay, so that's, it's sort of ugly, but basically I have no way to subtract um, in place without adding things to the computational graph. So I'm just redefining X as, um, actually, I don't want to do that. 
uh, x dot data minus delta x dot data r squared equals true and now we will print i and sum of squares okay so this might work um, python minimize a function dot pi unsupported operand type for times float and tensor okay that's uh, that's another thing we need to implement uh, but I can hack around that by doing that I think because we broadcast our multiplying um, unsupported right because I haven't implemented these things so um, I need to do multiply uh, x dot grad um, I think that might work Okay, so you can see that uh, you know at step zero it starts with three seven one at step one it takes a big step and this keeps getting smaller uh, and smaller and um, yeah so it works but uh, it works in so there's a couple things that are interesting um, one is that if you saw my uh, building a deep learning library video um, you know that live coding stunt there things were really done in terms of layers and here's a dense layer and here's an activation things like that um, whereas here the computations are done in terms of primitives right I've said here's a tensor and now I want to take that tensor and multiply it by itself and sum it up and uh, <laughs> And we're in a bit of a pinch because I haven't implemented a lot of things that will make this uh, nicer to work with. Um, but you can see how this allows us to start dealing with arbitrary computations. This minimizing a, a function was an arbitrary computation. I could have put any computation in here that can be expressed with the mole and the tensor sum and all of that stuff. So um, it's really handy that way. Um, if a bit clunky to work with, and, and it is a bit clunky to work with, I will give you that. Um, but it it works, um, or it seems to work anyway. It passes the unit test, and it, you know, I'm trying to minimize this function, and it got it down to 2 e to the minus 17, which is a real small number, and I could run it a lot more steps and got it much smaller. So anyway, um, I am pretty, uh, pretty happy with this. Uh, progress. I'm slightly uh, less happy with how much stuff is in this file here. Um, and so I think next time we're going to clean this up and actually make the library a little bit nicer uh, to use. Um, and you can see actually that this sum, I already implemented that as a method. So, you know, one thing I could have done that would make this slightly nicer is to just say dot sum and then I don't need tensor sum up here and um, and now if I run it it should still do the same thing um, and it still does so anyway uh, get add autograd tensor dot pi get add minimize the function dot pi get add test get status get commit m part three uh, get push origin part zero three um, yeah so that one went off without uh, too much of a hitch so thanks for watching I will do another one next time and like I said follow me on Twitter at Joel Gruse and you found this on YouTube so you know how to find me on YouTube um, and uh, there will be another one of these soon thank you